Fifteen lives miraculously changed when they called out on the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm so thankful today. My, 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 that I know He's real. Amen. Sister Judy used to sing a song. He's more than a story. Yeah. He is the King of glory. Amen. Yeah. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. Amen. Amen. God in the flesh. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. We've been talking about compromise the last few weeks and yeah. we almost got to our sermon last week. I wanted to talk to you about Nehemiah. So that's where we're going to go this morning. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We've been talking about compromise and what it does for you. And I ran across this quote that I've quoted several times here at church. and I've quoted it several times on Facebook and on our website. Lord bless them with a quieter vehicle. Amen. Hallelujah. Some respect for other people's hearing. Amen. John Wesley, and I've quoted, I misquoted it actually a little bit because I've always said that what one generation tolerates, the next generation accepts. Amen. Well, the actual quote is, is what one generation tolerates, the next generation will embrace. Amen. Come on. So maybe there's a little bit of difference between accepting something and embracing something. Amen. Right. But this has never been more true than in the generation of the day that we live in today. Amen. Come on. And this man, think about this, Brother Sleece, this man, John Wesley, lived he was born in 1703 and he died in 1791. Mm -hmm. So this is some, what, 200 plus years ago when he made this statement. And we have never seen it any more real than today. The things that at one time were condemned by the church are now accepted by the church. Things even our nation at one time frowned upon, shunned, and considered ungodly and considered not acceptable in society, now is acceptable in society. And we've made mention of a few of these things. Amen. Things that once were a shame, now they are not only better than not ashamed of it, they're proud of it. Amen. And we've made a mention of a few of these. Homosexuality is one of them. Amen. And I don't mean to jump on that and just ride that wagon for a while, but we've talked about homosexuality. It's something that has to be addressed. Because not only is it being accepted by states and governments and the Congress and the Supreme Court and all of that, yeah. it's also being accepted in our churches. Amen? Right. Well, maybe the Bible's just archaic in that. So maybe they, they didn't understand how a man <clears throat> could love a man. Oh yeah, they understood very well. Right. Amen? This is Homosexuality didn't just pop up one day and oh well, there it is. Uh -huh. We're talking about something all the way back to the not the beginning of time, but not far from that. Right. Sodom and Gomorrah, amen? They, were, they was full of homosexuals. And you can find that where? In the book of Genesis. So it's not something that's new. It's something that's been going on for a long time. It's something that the devil perverted. Amen? Right. Something that's supposed to be between a man and a woman and the devil perverted it. Amen? Oh. So homosexuality is one of the things. Used to be a shame. Amen? Right. Used to be what we would call in the closet. Right. Amen? Used to be something that was done in secret. Come on. And now it is heralded on our streets in America yeah. in gay pride parades. Amen? Right. With people loudly and, and proudly proclaiming, I'm a homosexual. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Well, it used to be a shame, but it's accepted now. Why? Right. Because little by little, mm -hmm. it became tolerated. Yeah. It became more acceptable. Till finally this generation has embraced it. Yeah. Not as a shame or, or as an abomination, but as an alternate lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Amen? Come on. So homosexuality is just one of the things. Even the very church that John Wesley and his brother, <coughs> what was his name, Charles Wesley, helped to found, mm -hmm. the Methodist movement can be traced back to John and Charles Wesley. Right. Even the Methodist church, even as I speak, are having trouble keeping it out of their bylaws and out of their because they're getting closer and closer yeah. to having enough preachers and enough people on their boards to pass them that it's okay for preachers to perform homosexual marriages, for you to be able to ordain homosexuals. Amen. It's getting harder and harder with every convention each year. They get closer and closer to passing the, something to be able to, to ordain homosexuals and, and give their approval on that. Mm -hmm. 
So John Wesley knew very well what he was talking about. Amen. What one generation tolerates, the next generation will embrace. Right. And we've seen it. We've seen it with homosexuality. Come on. We've seen it with people living together. Right. It used to be, it, it wasn't nothing to boast about. You were ashamed that, you know, I don't want them knowing that we're living together, but we're not married. Yeah. Now, not only is it approved, but it's encouraged right. by some government agencies. Come on. Someone told me not long ago, when her and her, this man was going to get married, both of them on Social Security, yeah. that the worker at the, at the welfare place wasn't supposed to tell them this, I don't guess. Maybe she was, but she said, listen, if y'all get married, one of you's going to lose your check. Yeah. But if you just move in together... Mm -hmm. You can both keep your check. Right. Amen. Right. So not only is it is it not frowned upon anymore, it's encouraged for you to live with somebody right. instead of getting married. Amen. Teen pregnancy, pregnancy out of wedlock, used to be something that was a shame. Yeah. When it happened in your family, you felt grief. You felt a shame about it. Amen. Right. Not today. Today, teen teenagers are proud of that. Matter of fact, in one state not long ago, it's been a few years now, but some teenage girls made a pact to see who could get pregnant first in their high school. Right. Amen. Come on. It used to be frowned upon, but now it's accepted. Not only right. by the teenagers, but by many times their parents. Come on. Amen. Come on. And I've heard people say, well, must have been God's will. <laughs> She's pregnant. This baby had to be God's will. No, 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 no. It ain't never God's will for you to have premarital sex. Right. It ain't never God's will for you. Now, can God use you and can He can He bless that baby and kill can you know and all that? I'm not saying the baby's cursed and all that. Maybe a prophet will come of that because God has a way of taking our bad decisions and turning them around if we'll give them to Him and put them in His hands and working them for our good and using something good out of that. Amen. But it certainly wasn't His will for you to climb in the back of that of that Chevrolet and, and conceive a child outside of wedlock. Amen. Come on. It was not God's will then. It is not God's will today. Amen. Amen. That's true. It is not acceptable to God. Never has been. Uh -huh. Homosexuality has never been acceptable to God. Uh -huh. Sex outside of the marriage has never been acceptable to God. Right. Never has been. Never, never will be. Amen. <clears throat> but today in our society, uh -huh. oh, it's become a rampant. It is nothing right. to see people pregnant that are not married. Right. You know that as well as I do. We have people in our family that it's happened to. Mm -hmm. You've had people in your family that it's happened to. Yeah. It's a common thing. Right. It's become the norm almost. And I hate right. to even say that. Right. It's almost become normal yeah. to practice the things that used to be a shame. Yeah. Amen? Right. It's almost become normal. And we can talk about abortion. We have talked about it a little bit. Amen? Yeah. Well, yeah. once you had to sneak down a back alley and find some illegal clinic or some half-rate doctor to perform to keep from being arrested or keep from being prosecuted for doing it now, in many cases, our government funds it. Right. That's true. In many cases, it is funded by our government. Amen. 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 We have cloaked it. We have adorned it in a robe that says a woman's right to choose. Yeah. A woman's right to choose what? Murder. <laughs> Amen. Amen. How far does that put us from some more immoral things that has been against the, the, the very foundations of our society for so many years? How close does that put us to accepting other things? Come on. Such as, if marriage is not between a man and a woman, and if you can be allowed to marry a man and a man and a woman and a woman, how far are we from being able for a man to marry his dog? His choice? Yeah. He's got freedom. Yeah. You're, you're going against his rights. Amen. Right. Say, so where's your wife? She's out in the barn tied up. Mm. Married my mule. Amen. Yeah. How far? I know that sounds ridiculous, but it sounded ridiculous years ago. The fact that our government would allow homosexual marriages to be sanctioned by the government. Amen. Yeah. It sounded ridiculous years ago that we would allow government's money to be able to, to, to fund abortions. Right. So see, the things that used to sound ridiculous are coming to pass today. Amen. Amen. That's true. So it's nothing. This is a slippery. I'm telling you, this is a slippery slope we're on. Right. Amen. Same. Allowing all these things. Amen. Come on, we talk about and when they took the prayer out of school. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we see some of the results of that. 
They won't let you. You can't pack a Bible in school no more. Right. So now they pack their forty-five and not their automatic weapons. Amen. Right. Their knives. Right. Come on. We can't lay all that at the at the at the uh, at the the, uh, the doorway of the schoolhouse though. Because if your children would get enough prayer and enough word at home, right. they take it to school with them anyway. Amen? Right. I ain't talking about even, even not the literal copy of the word. Right. They would have enough word in them that we would see a difference in our school systems if mom and daddy wasn't backslid and if mom and daddy would have a time of prayer, get back where they need to be with God and begin to worship the Lord again at home. Amen? Prayer went out of the home a long time before it did out of school. Amen? Amen. Because back during that time, you know, that was the time when Mama had to get her job and they had to have more money. And yeah. It wasn't like it used to be. Mama wasn't at home when the kids came home from school, amen, because she had a job. They had to pay for their expenses, amen. Right. And in many cases, I know the Mama had to work, but I also know in many cases Mama didn't have to work, but she did so they could afford the things that they wanted. Right. Not the things that they needed, but the things that they wanted. Amen. So... You know, a lot of a lot of homes kicked Jesus out of their home before they ever kicked him out of the school system. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. So we can't lay it all on the school system, but we see these things. We see uh, homosexuality and abortion and teen pregnancy and all of these things being condoned today. The things Amen. that used to be condemned that still condemned in the Word of God. Amen. Wow. Still condemned. God hasn't changed. Amen. Wow. Just because a generation tolerates it, just because a generation embraces it, don't mean God sanctions it and puts His approval on it. Amen. Wow. If it's still against the book, it's still wrong. Amen. No matter who's doing it, Amen. whether it's you, whether it's me, Amen. Amen. It's still wrong. Hallelujah. Yes, the Bible says in Psalms 9 and 17 that the wicked shall be turned into hell and that all the nations that forget God Right. All the nations that forget God will go to the same place. Amen. Right. Talking about hell. That's exactly where compromise will lead you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And this compromise that we've been talking about, it don't stop with the world. It don't stop at the, at the threshold of the church. Mm -hmm. Amen. The church has compromised as much as the world has. Amen. Mm -hmm. They don't stop at the steeple. They don't stop at the front door of the church, Brother Sleaze. We've compromised with our music. Right. Amen. Mm, Some of the groups today, you don't know whether they're rock bands or whether they're supposed to be Christian bands. Amen. They look the same. That's true. They sound the same. Yeah. <clears throat> I heard one of them this past week. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even understand what they were saying. Come on. They had the music so loud. <laughs> and you could hear them saying something, but you couldn't tell it was the gospel. Right. They had a bunch of kids in a frenzy. Well, and that gets sanctioned and approved by churches right. that says, hey, we can get some young people in our church if we'll allow these Christian rock bands, if you'll allow me to use that phrase, which is really a, a pretty a, a pretty bad phrase to use, amen, when you think right. about what rock and roll, the term actually means and where it originated That's from, right. amen, to slap Christian on the front of it. Amen. But we'll allow Christian rock bands and their strobe lights mm. and their smoke and their loud contemporary music into our churches in order to try and win the teens. What are you winning them to? What are you winning them to? Entertainment? You're certainly not winning them to Jesus. Amen? The Bible says to conform not to the world. Amen? But to be transformed by the renewing of your mind through the Word of God. Amen? The word conform means to not be fashioned after the world. To not follow after. To not become like the world. That's what we do. Right. We, we think that in order to become, in order to, to win a, a teenager, we've got to become something different than what the Bible teaches. Amen? Yeah. We've got to put on some kind of a costume to lure them in. Come on. The only way you're going to keep them is to keep them entertained. That's Amen? Right. Jesus has always been enough to save people. Amen. He's, his message of love and the gospel message has always been, guess what? I was a young people once. Mm. It was years ago, amen? Mm -hmm. Years and years ago. Brother Tyler is a young people this morning. Yeah. And Jesus is enough for Brother Tyler, amen? That's right. Brother Billy was a young people at one time, and Jesus was enough for Brother... They had that kind of music when I was growing up, amen? Yeah. But I didn't hear it when I went to church. Right. If I had, I would have thought, wait a minute. Yeah. Something ain't right. Yeah. But we've lost that. Amen. Radar today because the churches have compromised on their music. Amen. Amen. That's true. You can't never you can't tell what's gospel, what ain't. Right. They've compromised on their clothing. Right. Amen. 
Now, I probably ain't going to go there very much this morning because there's so much difference of opinion, but surely we can find some common ground and agree that we ought to dress modest. Yeah. Amen? That's right. Well, Christians don't even do that no more. Amen. Amen? You see them out in their bathing suits just like you see the world out in their bathing suits. That's right. You see them in their miniskirts coming into church just like you see the world in their miniskirts going to the bar. Right. I know these things make me popular, amen, but the church has compromised right. to the point where nothing is sacred anymore. Oh, come on. I've been in churches and oh. preached revivals where the pastor's kids sit on the front row eating a bag of Lay's, mm. a bag of chips. Mm. Mm. Amen. Mm. And what the pastor saying? Pass that bag around. Don't eat them all yourself. Yeah. We've lost any respect right. for the things of God. And it all started with compromise. Amen. Right. It all started with compromise. I realize this is just a building. I realize this is just a place where we meet to worship. There's nothing. This is just walls. This is just carpet that cost us a pretty penny. I mean, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. But it cost us a pretty penny. This is just pews. Yeah. But I realize this is a place we have set apart to worship God and to share the Word of God. Right. And if we lose, if we lose track of that, we'll lose some of the Spirit of God. Amen. Because He will not. He will not bless. He will not pour out His Spirit in places where He is disrespected. That's right, brother. Amen? That's right. We got more respect for people than we do God. That's right. Come on. You don't go into a court of law and sit before a judge and he's up there ruling and he looks over and you're eating you a bag of chips. <laughs> Amen? That's right. You don't go in Judge Judy's courtroom and eat a bag of chips. Amen? Let alone a real judge. Amen? That's right. You don't go in there and disrespect that place. You shouldn't Amen. come in the house of God and disrespect the house of God either. Amen. Amen. But what do we do? We move out this right here and put in a big screen TV and pass out hot dogs if we can get enough people to show up on Super Bowl Sunday. Right. That's true. Slippery slope. Amen. Amen. Slippery slope. Yeah. So we've compromised our standards. Church don't even know what standards is anymore. <laughs> Well, that means is, is you don't think anything and everything's all right. Amen. We've compromised on our standards so long in conviction, they don't even know what conviction is anymore. Matter of fact, your preacher will tell you in the big churches that there's no such thing as conviction. That's just condemnation. That's just the way you were taught. That's just the devil trying to make you feel bad for having a good time. No, there's still such a thing as old-fashioned Holy Ghost conviction. Amen. Yeah. And worst of all, and this is probably where the problem started, we have compromised on the Word of God. Yeah. Amen. Come on. For what? I think about 200 years, maybe 250 years, there was only one. If you went anywhere, if they were reading the Bible, it was King James Version. Come on. Amen? That's true. It, 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 uh, I laugh sometimes. We'll watch one of those, either, not Little House on the Prairie, but one of the shows like that, maybe a movie that's based back during the prairie times. Yeah. Back during the Western civilization, whatever. Back during the Western days. And they'll have somebody read the Bible and it'll be the NIV. Mm -hmm. And I told my wife the last time we were watching one, I said, that don't make, does that make any sense to you? <laughs> At the time this movie is supposed to be based, there was nothing but the King James Version. That's right. right. Nothing. But they'll go out there to bury that old cowboy and they'll crack the back on that Bible and they'll read it and I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Somehow or another, one of those NIVs got slipped in about 200 years before it's time. Amen? <laughs> oh. Because for 250 years or more, there was nothing but the King James Version. If you went into Baptist church, that's what they read out of. If you went into the Pentecostal church, that's what they read out of. Amen? That's all there was. That's all there was. Amen? But then, they started coming out with some and they thought, wait a minute. This... This uh, is a little easier to read. This sounds a little more like our modern day language. And they compromised and they compromised and now they got some books that you can't even tell they are the Word of God. Right. Amen. Amen? They got the good news for modern man and the Message right. Bible and the NIV and the, Brother Mike can name off a bunch more of them. Amen? Come on. Drifting away from the Word. Why? Because nobody had the guts to stand up and say no. Oh, I like it. There was, a, there was a quote I read this week, Charles Spurgeon. He said, learning to say no will benefit you more than learning all of the, of the language of Latin. Amen. Learning to say no 
to compromise will do you far. We learned about a man last week who couldn't say no to compromise. It was Saul. Amen? Right. Today we're going to learn about a man who could say no to compromise, and his name's oh, Nehemiah. Right. Go with me this morning to the book of Nehemiah. I want to give you the scripture. You can write this down that I tried to quote a minute ago. Romans, the 12th chapter, in the first and second verses, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The word conformed means to be fashioned alike. It means to conform to the same pattern. Come on. Well, we've seen that, ain't we? Yes. Sir. Amen. Listen to this. Yes. Nehemiah, the first chapter. And I'm not going to read all of this. Boy, I could. I love the book of Nehemiah. Mm -hmm. Of course, I love it all. Genesis yeah. to Revelation. Mm -hmm. Amen. But Nehemiah Amen. here, the Bible starts out, the, the, the book starts out, Nehemiah 1 and 1 says, The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakali, mm -hmm. and it came to pass in the month Shizlu, in the 20th year, as I was at Shushan, <clears> the palace, it says that Hanana, one of my brethren, came, and it says, He and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, that had went back, they had left captivity and had went back to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And I asked them what was going on. Nehemiah asked them concerning how are they doing? How is the city doing? And this was their answer. It says, The remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province mm -hmm. are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Right. And it came to pass when I heard these words, Nehemiah said, that I sat down and I wept, and I mourned certain days, and I fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. You talk about a man of God. When he got news, amen, yeah. that the city of Jerusalem was broken down, that God's people were in distress, and they were... They were tormented. He began to get a burden for them. Something ought to happen to us today. Whenever we turn on the television and we see where some of our states in the United States have said it's okay for homosexuals to get married, we ought to be burdened because of that. Amen? Something ought to happen to us today. Whenever we read about the, 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 the uh, religious conventions getting together and voting that it's okay to ordain homosexuality. Amen? It's okay to ordain homosexuals to put your approval on homosexuality. Something ought to happen to us today. When we turn on the television this morning and we don't hear nothing about Jesus, all we hear about is money and greed and material things. We don't hear nothing about the gospel, about heaven or hell. Something ought to happen to us today like it did with Nehemiah. We ought to begin to get grieved in our spirit and begin to get a burden. I mean, how much time have we spent this week seeking God and saying, God, save this nation. God, serve you. Save your people. Turn them back from the perverted ways they're being led down and turn them back to you. Yeah. Something ought to happen to us. That's right, brother. And it did happen to Nehemiah. Right. He began to fast. He began to pray. What is fast? Right? We don't know what that is anymore. <laughs> Amen? Right. Who knows what fasting is anymore? Listen, I still believe there's power in fasting. Amen. Amen. I don't believe it enough or I'd do more of it. Amen? Amen? Come on. We're talking about fasting. Yeah. But that's like the Jews and their sacrifice. We ain't practicing it. Amen? Right. If it's going to do you any good, you're going to have to practice it. Come on, bro. It'd do us some good not only uh, spiritually, but physically. Right. Amen. Yes. Might get out some of those old toxins we've been storing up. Amen. Right. Spend some hours fasting. Amen. Drinking right. some water. Right. Amen. True. So he begins to fast. He gets under the burden. Oh, Amen. Wow. Because he heard of what was going on. Yeah. And he begins to pray. And if you'll read this, I'm not going to read it all. But if you'll read this, you'll learn that not only was he burdened, but he began to seek God. Right. That God would allow him to do something. Come on. Oh, that's foreign to us today. Yeah. Oh, we'll pray for people. Uh -huh. We'll pray, God, send somebody. Yeah. Send somebody. Let somebody go. Yeah. yeah. Nehemiah <laughs> said, Lord, send me. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. We'll pray, Lord, put the burden on sleeves. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Send Brother Butler. Yeah. Oh, God wants somebody to say, Lord, send me. Come on. What can I do? Yeah. That's what Nehemiah did. That's it. He said, Lord, what can I do? Come on. What can I do? And it bothered him so much that 
The Bible says in verse 4 in the first chapter that he sat down and he wept and he mourned certain days and he fasted and he prayed before the God of heaven. We need some men of God like that. Amen. We got enough of them that show up from the beauty shop. Amen. Yeah. Not a hair out of place. Yeah. Got on their rouge and stuff so the camera don't glare off their cheeks as they stand before their thousands of their mega church. Amen. Right. And deliver what they've been studying on or what they've been putting together since Thursday. Amen. Come on. We got enough of those. Right. We need some old battle-worn battle -worn soldiers, amen, hallelujah, that look like they've been through it, amen. They've been weeping, they've been praying, they've been seeking God. Their hair ain't exactly straight, amen. They ain't got nothing, you know, they ain't got it all stuck down and it won't move and they ain't wearing one of them fancy suits. Oh, but they've been in the presence of God, amen. We got enough preachers with $5,000 suits on. We need some preachers that's got some suits where the knees is worn out on them, amen, where they've been riding the altar saying, God, save them, I move. Let me do something, God, for your glory. We need some preachers with some worn out suits. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. We need some preachers that are more worried about the condition of the church and the condition of the lost souls than they are the condition of their automobile. Oh, Amen. Yeah. Or the house that they live in. Come on. Or the suit they had to wear to church. Yeah. My goodness. Good Nehemiah was one of these men. Yes, sir. You talk about no compromise. Mm -hmm. This man didn't have any place for compromise. He understood. He must have been reading some of that Scripture. Amen. He must have known some of the history of Israel of what happened when you compromise. Because he got him a bulldog grip and said, God, I want to do something. We need some men of God like that. Come on. We need some men of God that will take the sword of the Spirit and begin to cut on the cancer of compromise that has infiltrated the church. Yes, sir. We need some preachers that will step behind the pulpit this morning that will preach you the truth. Right. Not necessarily what your ears want to hear, but what God wants you to hear. Amen? Amen. So Nehemiah, he gets over the burden. And he begins to say, Lord, send me. Send me. Right. We need some men of God like that. Amen. That will begin to sing. You know what Joel says? You don't have to go there because we're going to keep on here where we're at in Nehemiah. But the book of Joel says, Let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch of the altar. Mm -hmm. Let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, yeah. and give not thine heritage to reproach. This is what Nehemiah was doing. Right. This is exactly what Nehemiah was doing. He was weeping. He was crying. He was saying, Lord, spare your people. Move in this situation. Let me be used of your hand to make a difference. Oh my goodness. What a, what a move of God we could have and what a difference the church. See, the, the church has lost her effectiveness because she's compromised herself out of any influence she ever had. Amen. She's lost her effectiveness because why? Because the world sees in the church what the world already has so they don't need it. Come on, brother. Amen. Come on, preach. They don't, they don't look any different. They don't act any different. Right. They don't talk any different. Okay. They don't got no more peace or joy than I got, so they must not have nothing. Mm -hmm. The church That's has it. compromised herself till she's got no effectiveness on the world. That's it, brother. Amen. I'm talking not thank God not all of it, but I'm talking about a large percentage of it. Mm -hmm. Has no effectiveness on the world whatsoever. Matter of fact, she's became a joke. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's she's true. became yeah. a joke to That's much true. of the world today. And she's done it to herself. She's done it to these clowns that stepped out on stage this morning in their Hollywood style worship service and their compromising word that they preached have made the church a joke. Amen. Yeah, really. Don't stand for nothing. Come on. Everything's all right. We got them now saying it is called the gospel of inclusion. It means that no matter what religion you are, say you were over in Africa. And you were worshiping this false god. But it was the only light you knew, so you turned to that light. Yeah. So they said, well, then God will honor that. You're okay. Because you turned to the only light that you knew. That ain't Bible. Right. He said, have no other gods before me. He will not deliver you if you're calling on the name of Baal. That's right. See, that's how, that's how you don't need any more proof than what has been done through Jesus' name than that. Right. Because if Jesus was not real, uh -huh. if He was false, if He was no more than a prophet, God would not honor the prayers of those that pray in Jesus' name. That's right. Yet we see homosexuals delivered, alcoholics delivered, dope addicts delivered, people right. saved, set free, yeah. healed of disease, all through the name of Jesus. 
Oh my goodness. Oh, preach. <clears throat> we need some preachers that'll weep. Yes, sir. That'll seek God. Amen. That ain't that ain't a fear to get their hair messed up. Yeah. Amen. Come on. That you don't offend by calling them at three o'clock of the morning and asking them for prayer. Right. If you're out there this morning and you belong to one of those churches that has 5,000 members, try calling your pastor for prayer this afternoon. See who you get. His flock's are big. He can't take care of none of the sheep. Right. So Joel calls for this. Nehemiah begins to seek God. Send me. Send me. Use me. Let me be a vessel for your glory. And we find in the second chapter where Nehemiah goes before the king. And the king says, Nehemiah, something's wrong with you. He's standing there in the presence of the king. And listen to what the king says. Just by looking at him. Nehemiah hasn't opened his mouth yet. It came to pass. You drop down here in the latter part of the first verse. It says that he took a cup of wine. He was the cupbearer for the king. And he gave it to the king. And it says, Now I had not been afford before time sad in his presence. Right. Wherefore the king said unto me, this is what the hand he opened his mouth yet. Why is thy countenance sad, mm -hmm. seeing thou art not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Yeah. Then Nehemiah says, I was so afraid. Yeah. Then he says to the king, let the king live forever. And he begins to tell him Come on. what's going on. He makes a request to the king. He asks the king, can I go? Yeah. He says, if it please the king, if thy servant have found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldest send me unto Judah, yeah. unto the city of my fathers, that I may build it. All right. Here we find Nehemiah, this man of no compromise, comes before the king, and the king just looks at him and thinks, something's wrong. Right. You're grieved. Come on. Your sorrow, I can see that it's sorrow of heart. Well, we could use some of that this morning. Amen. We could use some of that this morning. Right. Amen. I ain't saying going around like this. Amen. But we could use somebody this morning that has enough burden for the shape of this country, that has enough burden for the condition of the church, that people can tell it. People can tell, hey, right. what, 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 what kind of burden are you carrying, brother? Mm -hmm. And not only will they ask you what kind of burden you're carrying, but they might. <clears throat> oh, this would be wonderful. This would be wonderful if somebody say, can I help you carry the load? Yeah. Oh, my, my, my. Let that sink in. Amen. Amen. It's one thing to call somebody or text somebody and tell them you're praying for them. And I do that all the time. And I am praying for them. I wouldn't tell them I was. But well, when you get somebody to say, is there anything I can do? Can I help you carry the load? Maybe you don't even have to say that to them. Maybe you get down on your knees in the privacy of your prayer closet or someplace where you pray by yourself. Or maybe you're going down the road and you say, Lord, help me to be able to help them. Let me help them carry the load. Lord, I see the load, the burden that they are under today. Help me, Lord, to help them carry that burden. Isn't that wonderful? Wouldn't that be something wonderful if we'd start praying that? Amen? Help me to be able... I see the kind of burden that Brother David is under. Lord, help me to be able to help share the load. Help me to be able to... See, it's a lot easier to carry a load when you got somebody else helping you. Amen? Help me to be able to, to, to help him to carry the load, Lord. And put some of the burden on me. Oh, my goodness. We don't pray that, do we? We always pray for deliverance. We ain't never caught praying, Lord, put a burden on me. Help me to take somebody else's, Lord. Help me to help somebody else through this trial and all. We want to stay as far away from that as we can. Say, Lord, bless them. Bless them, Lord. Deliver them. Yeah, but what about getting in there and getting you? Rolling up your sleeves and getting some elbow grease and say, Lord, help me. Let, let me help them carry the load this morning. Put some of that burden on me. Come on, brother. That's what Nehemiah was doing. Nehemiah was not satisfied standing off and right. seeing God's people suffer and just stretching a hand and saying, Bless them, Lord. Right. Bless them, Lord. Oh. No, Nehemiah wanted to get involved. Mm -hmm. There's something I can do, surely. Mm -hmm. I wish the church would feel that way this morning. Yeah. There is something you can do. Amen. How about the, the start Nehemiah had? How about doing some praying? Come on. How about doing some fasting? Right. How about doing some seeking the face of God for the condition of our country? Come on. Amen? That will do more good than any ballot you ever cast. Right. Then any vote you ever go into the booth. Now, I, I, I believe in voting. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. I voted in every election as far back as I can, as a long time. I believe in voting. But spending some time on your knees seeking God for this country and our leaders will do more good than any vote you ever casted. Amen. Any vote you'll ever cast. That's true. Listen to this. So the king allows him to go. Mm. Amen. And the Bible says in verse 13, the second chapter, that Nehemiah went up by night. He didn't tell anyone what he was doing. He didn't tell the people of the city there. But he went out by night and he, to see what the damage was. To see what the work needed to be done. So at a time when no one was around, when no one was looking, my shoes untied, he was seeking out saying, well, that wall there, it has to be replaced. And he was checking the foundations of it. We'd have to completely replace that. This here has to be fixed. That there has to. We need some people that will inspect what's going on with God's people. Amen. Mm -hmm. Say, well, there's the problem right there. Mm -hmm. The foundation needs to be sure enough. Amen. Mm -hmm. We need to go back down. Some of this stuff, listen, we need to tear it completely down yeah. and lay a whole new foundation. Amen. A foundation that is Bible based and then build on that. Amen. And some of these things are going to have to be completely uprooted. Amen. The Bible says the axe is laid at the root of the tree. Amen. That don't bring down, that don't bring forth good fruit. That's the way it is. Some of these trees, you can't just prune them. You're going to have to cut them plump down. And not just cut them down, you're going to have to go to the root of it with the Word of God and destroy the false doctrine that caused it, that caused it to sprout up in the first place. Amen? Yes, sir. That's what Nehemiah was doing. That's true. He said, we're going to have to fix that. That foundation is no good. We're going to have to... Oh, isn't that good? Yes, sir. They have, that, that foundation's ruined. It's cracked. That's good preaching. So if your foundation's wrong, you ain't going to make it. Right. Anything you build on it ain't going to stand. Everybody, know, everybody knows that. Right. How many of you day going to go out and build, spend all this money to build a house, but the foundation's bad? <laughs> you got more sense than that, and you ain't an architect. Right. Amen. Amen. Make sure the foundation's right. So he goes out and he looks. Mm -hmm. And the enemy gets wind of this. Amen. The enemy gets wind of it. That somebody has to let me find this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And they begin to laugh. First, the Bible says that when the enemy hears of it, that they're troubled because someone has came seeking the welfare of God's people. Right. Oh, they were happy that nobody was doing nothing. Look at Israel. Look at Jerusalem. And oh, nobody cared. But the minute they got wind that somebody cared. And it wasn't an army. It was one man. Yeah. yeah. Amen. It was one man, Brother Sleese. When the enemy gets wind, see, you don't have to have an army here. Amen? When he gets wind, at all, uh -oh, somebody over there in that little storefront church is beginning to seek God. Yeah. Somebody over there is concerned about the welfare of the church. Somebody over there is concerned about the welfare of the country. Yeah. Come he begins on. to get troubled. Mm, amen. amen? So his first response, you know, he starts getting troubled. That somebody has came to seek the welfare of the children. That's in verse 10. It says it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man, not an army, not even a king, mm -hmm. but just a, a cupbearer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He was the cupbearer, brothers. He wasn't even part of the royalty. Amen. He wasn't part of the royal family. He was just a cupbearer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it says it grieved them exceedingly that there came a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. See, you can make a difference. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I ain't a part of it. Oh, all you have to do is begin to <laughs> seek God. Begin to be concerned about what's going on. And the enemy will be grieved because of it. Right. The next thing the enemy does, and you, you need to read this. The next thing the enemy does is they begin to laugh on the storm. And they say, what, what are they going to do? You know, what, what, are these, what are these people going to do? The, 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 the Verse 19 says they laughed us to scorn. They despised us. These same people that was afraid of them earlier, afraid of that was grieved because Nehemiah came. Right. And you know what Nehemiah's answer to that was when they laughed on the storm? When they said, Will you rebel against the king? Will you go against but didn't I Oh my goodness. Will you go against the status quo? Will you go against the train of thought that everyone else has? Will you swim against the tide? Nehemiah said this, the God of heaven will prosper us. All right. Therefore we, His servants, will arise and build. Did, oh, did you hear that? That's verse 20. Come on. We, His servants, will arise and we will build. But you have no portion, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. All 
All right. This ain't none of your business. Come on. I like that. Amen. Some of us need to tell the enemy this ain't none of your business and it's going about our stuff. All Amen. Right. When he goes poking his old long crooked nose in your business, you yeah. just need to say this ain't nothing to you. Right. You have no portion. You know it. You have no inheritance in this. It's between me and God. Right. Oh, hallelujah. We need some people that are stand up today, toe to toe, or maybe not toe to toe, but look down at the enemy where he's supposed to be anyway, and say, you have no portion of this. This is not your inheritance. You done blew it. Yeah. You, you might have had a shot at one time, but you ain't no more. This ain't your business. It's between me and God. And I'm going to seek Him for what I can do for the glorification of His kingdom. Come on. Boy, that's good preaching. Amen. Amen. That's true. Said so this said you ain't got no part of this. You talk about backbone. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. You talk about backbone. Yeah. Say, well, Brother Billy, this man had a lot of guts. Oh, All he right. just had a burden. Mm -hmm. he, you don't have to be some kind of superhero of faith. You just have to get a burden. Mm -hmm. Right. You just have to care mm -hmm. about what's going on. Most of the time we walk around like we don't care. Mm -hmm. Right. And our actions speak louder than our words. Amen. Come on. This man cared. Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. And you'll read chapter 3 and you'll find where he sets them all in order and you'll find that these were working. It gives all their names. Mm. Now I'm going to read it all off because I've got to find a stopping point. It talks about how these people built and next to them built mm. the people of Jericho and next to them built Zakur, the son of Emery. And then it talks about the fish gate and how the Hellenessa built there. And beside of him, someone was working. And beside of him, see, there had to be some unity. There had to be, you couldn't have all this division and all these people fighting and all this backstabbing we got going on in the church today. Amen. Had to be some people willing to work together. This church will not, we've been here for six years. We won't last much longer if we don't have people that will gather, that will bond together and work side by side and not have any fighting and arguing and back stabbing and all that stuff. Oh, they didn't have none of that going on here. But as a matter of fact, the Bible says in this book that the walls were finished, the work was done. Why? Because the people had a mind to work. That's right. Well, listen to this. You go on down, you can read all that right there. I want to get to the place where the enemy sends word to him. The Bible says in the fourth chapter, the sixth verse, you can write that down, that the people had a mind to work. That's the fourth chapter and the sixth verse. You'll find out there in that fourth chapter that the enemy decided to have a sneak attack against them. They said, if we can catch them off guard, we can take them. Yeah. We can sneak up on them. What happens? God, God lets the man of God lets the man of God that he's got working there know that the sneak attack is coming. Amen. Verse 15 says, It came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us what they were going to do. Amen. That God had brought their counsel to naught. They returned, then returned all of us that built the wall, every one to his work. And don't miss this. This is verse 17, chapter 4. And they which built the wall, and they that bear the burdens, those that were laden, it says that every one with one hand was wrought in the work, and with the other hand they held a weapon. Right. Did you hear that? Amen. Each man. One hand was in the work. The other hand was holding a weapon. Come on. See, the, the enemy was going to plan to sneak. That's what compromise will do. Right. He'll want to sneak in on you. Right. But he can't. As long as, even if you got one hand in the work, you got your other hand as your weapon. Amen. The Word of God can dispel any form of, of doctrine, any form of, of false doctrine and doctrines of devils that comes along as long as you compare it to the Word of God. So today, if we've got one hand in the work like we're supposed to have, but we don't forget to have uh, the weapon of God in our other hand, then when the spirit of deception comes along, we will say no. No, that ain't what God's Word says. Oh, I wish we could learn to say no today. That ain't what God's Word says. So these men would work in one hand in the work, one hand in the weapon, and it says a sword was girded by his side. Yes, sir. My goodness. I told you. I told you before. Yeah. i tell you again. You can put it on my tombstone if you want to. You can say this is all the man knew how to say. If you have a dream, if you have a vision, if you have a revelation, if you hear a word, if you hear a woman, if you hear a man, and it goes contrary to the book, it ain't God. All right. Amen? That's true. So they had him a weapon. You got a weapon today. Right. Use it. Amen. Use it. When the devil comes to you and says it's this way, say, oh, no, it ain't. It is written. What did Jesus say to the devil in the wilderness? 
when it came to him and he said, yeah, but it, is, it says this, as Jesus says, yeah, but it is written. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. That, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You can dispel any form of deception by His word. That's right. So He said, hold on to your weapon. Amen. Hold on to your weapon. Amen. Thank God. Almost done. Glory. Chapter 6. And this is getting close to the end. It came to pass, not the end of the book, but the end of the wall being finished. It came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem, the Arabian. Now you'll notice here that they keep adding enemies. <laughs> because yeah. they, we, we're, our, our work is ineffective, so let's add on another guy, see if he can help us. Yeah. And the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall, mm. and that there was no breach left therein, though at that time we had not set up the doors upon the gates. Mm. Listen to this. This is what I want to get to. I've spent the last two Sundays trying to get to this. Sanballat and Geshem sent, un, Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages of the plain of Ono. But they thought to do mischief. They thought to do me mischief. They sent to Nehemiah and they said, Come on, let us reason together. Let us have a meeting of the minds. I told you last week, there's no comfort. I don't have to sit down across the table from you and discuss Jesus and Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Amen? Right. There's nothing to discuss. That's right. I'm not going to compromise and say, well, you know, you're right. Mm -hmm. He's just as good. You can get there with Him. No, 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 no. Oh. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. You can't get there except by me. That means Muhammad ain't. Right. Amen? That's right. And you got a whole bunch of people deceived and building their faith upon something, upon a false prophet's dreams and visions. Amen. That's Amen? It. That's it. They don't line up with God's Word. Yes, sir. They sent to Him and said, won't you come down? And listen to what Nehemiah did. This man of no compromise. I sent messengers unto them. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Oh, it don't take much to amuse this country preacher. Amen. Right. Geshem and Sanballat sent messengers to him. And he sent messengers back to them. I don't know if they've been the same guys he sent that they sent to him. They said, say to that guy, say to my enemies, I'm doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? You see, there was nothing to discuss. Right. Nehemiah said, there's no, there's no reason, there's no room for compromise in this situation. I'm working. I don't have time. All right. Go and tell them that. Come on. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. They didn't stop, though. The Bible says they sent to him four times. Yeah. After the same sort. See, the devil won't stop. Mm -hmm. The enemy won't stop. That's it. You know that song I quoted you a week or two ago? Satan came to me this morning, spoke to me without a warning. He said, why don't you quit or compromise? He'll come again in the morning. All right. Amen. Well, that's it. Sooner or later, he might decide, well, I ain't messing with him. I'll go fool somebody else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he won't stop with one try. Really? They didn't stop with one try. Mm -hmm. Four times, full stature, they win. They sinned. And you know what happened each time, Brother Rodney? Each time he said, I answered them after the same manner. The answer was still no. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. That's what we have to do. we got to learn to say no. Right. Amen? I've had preachers that wanted to have meetings with me and let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. Had one preacher tell me I needed to be, that he saw that I needed to be preaching the kingdom theology. Wasn't no use talking to him about it. I wouldn't even change my mind because right. it goes against God's word. Mm -hmm. I got preacher friends that have been sucked off into the Hebrew roots movement. <clears throat> you know, we need to sit down and discuss some things. No, not really. We don't. Not unless I'm going to change your mind because you sure ain't going to change mine mm -hmm. because the way you've been led is goes contrary to the word of God. Mm -hmm. Right. And you might as well hit your head against that brick wall four times like they did whenever they came to Nehemiah and said, come on down, come on down. No, 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 no. I ain't going to do it. Come on. Because it goes against God's Word. Right. It goes against God's work. Amen. It goes against God's purpose. Mm -hmm. Nehemiah was a man that would not compromise. He knew how to say no to the enemy. Yeah. We need to learn how to say no to the enemy. He said, Brother Billy, you're not open-minded. Sure I am. I know that I do not know everything. Yeah. I know that I can be wrong about some things. But I also know that everything that I see, everything that I hear, everything you tell me 
It better pass this proof test right here. Mm -hmm. All right. Amen. Come on. Or I ain't even swallow it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. If you get deceived today, it'll be because you didn't compare what you heard to the book. Mm -hmm. If you get led astray today, it'll be because you didn't compare what you heard. And I thought I'd just taken one scripture out of this. Yeah. God will confirm His Word over and over again, Brother David. Right. You can't just take one word and say, well, the Bible says this. Yeah. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. Amen. Here a little, there a little. Make sure that God's word confirms it because it does. God's words will confirm itself. Amen. So Nehemiah knew how to say no. He was a man of no compromise. We need some of those men today. Amen. Give you some homework. Don't read at least the first six chapters of the book of Nehemiah. And you'll find a whole lot more nuggets than what I gave you. I preached a whole revival once just on nothing but the book of Nehemiah. Never got out of it. Yeah. And didn't get finished either. Right. At least the first six chapters, it'll bless your soul. Right. A lot of good nuggets in there. Amen. Someone else this morning have something before we go.